What's up, YouTube? We all know Christmas is super stressful. If you are like me, you are at the very last minute of things, like maybe don't know if you have all of your ducks in a row before Christmas actually gets here. We are running behind. We need to create some Christmas candies and some sweet treats for the family and for our get togethers. And we do not want to cook and bake and dirty all the dishes. So I'm gonna show you today a few of my favorite go-to Christmas treats and we're not gonna cook or bake anything. Let's go. First, we are gonna start with this two ingredient fudge. Super duper easy and the kids really love it. You're just gonna need one bag of the white chocolate chips and one can of white frosting. And all you're gonna do is put them each into a separate container, put them in the microwave. I do them in 30 second increments. Just stir them, make sure that everything's getting good and melted and mixed around. Once your frosting is thin enough, you can, pull, you can pour it, then pour it over your chocolate chips, mix it all together. Separate them into two different bowls if you want to color them. I should have used way more food coloring in this, but I didn't. So we got a light green for ours, but definitely use more green food coloring. Also, I did not have red food coloring, so I used these red sugar sprinkles on the other half of the fudge dough. I guess I don't know what a batter dough. Anyways, still turned out super cute. So mix in your sprinkles or your... your uh, food coloring, whatever it is that you're using. And then you are just going to take a piece of wax paper, put it in a baking dish and scoop it out into separate little sections all over the pan. No rhyme or reason to it. Just make it as messy as you can. I have it all scooped onto my wax paper. I just kind of smooth it out, pop it into the fridge until it is hardened, and then just cut into the desired size of squares that you would like, and then enjoy. Turned out really good. The kids really liked it. Uh, definitely will be better with red food coloring, but still, it is simple. The next one we are gonna do is just a classic almond bark covered pretzel. You can do sticks, you can do the pretzel twists, you can do the Christmas shapes. You literally just melt al almond bark down in the microwave. I use three squares at a time so that way I don't have too much almond bark left over and then nowhere to put it and then I'm not wasting it. So just a tip. Another tip, make sure you do not have a wet spoon or a wet bowl with your almond bark. It will seize up your almond bark and turn it into chunks of like gravel and you won't be able to use it. So really you just cover whatever pretzel you're, you're using with your almond bark and scrape off the excess chocolate and then you lay it on some wax paper to harden. The kids really like this one. When I would eat Christmas treats regularly, these were absolutely my favorite. I'm not a huge fan of the chocolate almond bark. Jake likes this one, but yeah, you can definitely use the white almond bark or the chocolate almond bark. And you can also sprinkle some sprinkles over these if you'd like, or drizzle the opposite color over the others. Just mix and match them or make them however you'd like them to be. Let's go outside. The snow is falling down and every child is having so much fun. So I guess I don't really know what I would call this one. It's just the the brown chocolate almond bark with dried fruits and nuts in it. This one has a mix of like almonds and peanuts and cranberries and raisins. And I'm just chopping these up so they're not such big chunks um, on the cutting board. And it just makes it easier to like set into the almond bark. Again, melt your al almond bark down in the microwave. Have your husband help you dip the pretzels because it literally takes forever. So he can be helping while you're doing this part. And he'll also eat as many as he's making. And then after your almond bark is melted down in the microwave, just drizzle it over your chopped up fruits and nuts. And I just have this on a wax paper. I didn't use a dish for this at all. And that, that almond bark is gonna get right down into all the little crooks and crannies of the, 
the nuts and the raisins and stuff and then just smooth it out and then I put this into the fridge just to help it solidify a little bit once it's done it's all back to a solid form just take your wax paper and break it all up into desired chunks and it's really it's really good this is really really yummy I do like the chocolate almond bark with this one and it looks really cool too definitely a favorite I guess I don't know what I would call this next one is going to be oh spend forever to unwrap the candy canes why are candy canes so hard to unwrap I swear they put like shrink wrap saran wrap on each one of them that's th that that took longer than this whole thing once you have your candy canes unwrapped you're gonna put them into a plastic baggie hit them with a wooden spoon or a rolling pin, break them into chunks. We're gonna sprinkle these chunks over some melted white almond bark. Put this on some wax paper as well. You probably wouldn't have to have a container for this either. You could just put it on the wax paper like we did the last one. Smooth it out a little bit so it takes up some space and you don't have really thick pieces. And then you're just gonna take your crushed up peppermint pieces and, or I guess candy cane pieces, and put them all over your almond bark. I guess hindsight, I would have definitely maybe pressed these down just a little bit, those bigger chunks, because here when I'm breaking it up, some of the bigger ones flew off. You can see one of them just kind of rolled down. So maybe just gently push them down just a little bit, not too much. You wanna be able to still see them on the top. This is also very, very good. I mean, these all would be good in like gift baskets or you know, little prize baskets for people if you do any games that you're gathering. And it looks really pretty. I love this one. Okay, so the next one that we are going to make, I believe, is the peanut butter bars. Stop looking at the peppermint almond bark. I wonder why they call it almond bark. I bet there's some history to that. Okay, these peanut butter balls, super easy. Okay, so I think I used, I'm going to say, a cup of peanut butter. You, you don't have to have like a formal recipe for any of these. And then a fourth a cup of sugar, mix it together. We don't have a very like creamy consistency peanut butter. So just kind of, I don't know, just kind of judge it by eye. Don't use more than a cup of peanut butter at the first go around just, just so you have um, the consistency that you want. And then pick a cereal that you like. It could be Chex Mix. It could be Rice Krispies. It could be... Um, just anything that's like semi like crunchy and not super sweet, like cornflakes. And you're going to mash those up into your sugar peanut butter mix. And you want to get a consistency that you can mold into a ball in your hand. And I'll show you here in just a second how we do that. And I do like one inch balls. For this, we're not using almond bark. We are going to use these semi sweet chocolate chips. We're going to melt them down in the almond bark container because why am I going to be doing dishes? Why am I going to do that? I'm not. I'm just going to reuse the same dish. Um, so melt down your chocolate chips, form your peanut butter concoction into little balls, roll it around in your melted chocolate chips, and then just place them on the wax paper to dry. These turn out really good. The kids really like these. Jake, did you like those peanut butter balls? Jake likes them too. It's nice that they're crunchy inside. Okay, the next one is puppy chow. Classic puppy chow, super easy. I think people think that um, puppy chow is kind of a pain to make or maybe even difficult. It's not. I have um, probably two cups of chocolate chips here and a cup of peanut butter. Just mix it together. It does not matter because that chocolate is gonna harden up no matter how much you put in there. So make a big batch or a small batch or however you wanna do it. Make sure your peanut butter is good and mix in with your chocolate. We use this Crispex cereal instead of Chex Mix just because that was on sale and that's what we got at the store. And I have about eight cups of cereal here. Pour your peanut butter chocolate mixture over your cereal and give it a good mix so the chocolate is covered on all of the pieces of cereal. It's kind of tricky to do this without smashing some of your pieces of cereal, but it all turns out okay in the end. After you have it all good and mixed in and all chocolate on all the pieces of cereal, this is how we do ours. I guess I don't know how other people do their puppy chow. I take two grocery bags, so that way if there's any little holes in one of them, you don't have a big mess. I pour all of our chocolate-covered cereal into the grocery bags, just like this. And then I'm not, like, dirtying up another dish to mix in. I, surely people don't put this in a dish to do this next part. Okay, so I have it in the bag, and then I just twist up the top of the bag. 
apple, I guess we put the powdered sugar in first. And I just cover it, probably four cups of powdered sugar. And if you have too much, it's okay. It will just fall to the bottom and, and be dust at the bottom of the container. If you have too little, you can just keep adding powdered sugar until it is covered the way you want it to be covered. And you can tell if it's not covered enough, it's going to be very chocolatey looking instead of powdered sugar. Anyways, give it a good shake in this the sack after you have it twisted up so that way the powdered sugar goes all over all of the pieces of cereal and then I just dump it out onto a large strip of wax paper and let that chocolate solidify and harden up and then you have a whole bunch of puppy chow goodness for everybody to enjoy. Look, it's like perfect. Anyways, that's all we've got for our treats that you can make for this Christmas. And they are super simple. You can make them all in the microwave. You can do it all with two bowls. Just keep reusing them. And yeah, you'll have a lot of really good treats for everybody to enjoy and not have to spend a whole lot of time doing it.